Yo ho ho! Here we are with chapter 6, lesson number 8, Curve Sketching. If you remember last lesson we were looking at stationary points and their nature. We can now take that one step further and we can sketch a curve. But in order to do that we need to know some information. What we need to know is the stationary points and their nature. And we also need to know where the graph would cross the x-axis and the y-axis. Obviously, it's going to cross the x-axis when y is 0. It'll be something as 0 for the coordinates. And it'll cross the y-axis when x is 0. So it'll cross it 0 something. Let's work through a couple of examples then. So example number one, sketch the graph of y equals x bracket 3 minus x squared. So as it says here, the first thing we need to know is any stationary points. So let's look at stationary points. To get the stationary points, this is the differentiation chapter, and you have to differentiate. But before you do that, remember you're best multiplying out brackets. So do that, and you get 3x minus x cubed. From there, we can differentiate. So if you differentiate... Uh, 3x minus x cubed, you end up with 3 minus 3x squared. After that, how do you know where the stationary points are? That is a perla, right, Ms. Amel? Stationary points occur when dy by dx equals 0. So set dy by dx equal to 0. And we get 3 minus 3x squared equals 0. Woo! From there, you can solve that to find x. How would you solve it to find x? Well, Factorise. Take out 3 is the highest common factor. Whoops, let's get rid of that. Take out 3 is the highest common factor. And then from there, you've got a difference of two squares. So it's 1 plus x and 1 minus x. After we have factorised that, since it's equal to 0, we know either 1 plus x equals 0 or 1 minus x equals 0. Solving that to find x, we'd have x equal to negative 1 or we'd have x equal to positive 1. After we've found where the stationary points would be then, we know these are the x-coordinates for our stationary points. We need to also know the y-coordinates, but we also need to know if it's going to be a maximum, if it's going to be a minimum, or maybe it's a point of inflection. And for that, you would be using your nature table. Yeah! So, we started off with y equals x bracket 3 minus x squared. That's the derivative. And here is the nature table. So we have a nature table with negative 1, and we have a separate nature table with 1. So remember the way you work this. Pick a number just before negative 1, like negative 2. Sub it into dy by dx, which is here. If you put in negative 2 then, negative 2 squared gives you 4. 3 times 4 gives you 12, 3 take away 12 definitely gives you a negative, which means the graph will be sloping down. If you put in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 take away 3 gives you 0. You're expecting to find 0 here. Remember, these are the values that make the derivative equal to 0, so the gradient will just be 0 there. And if you put in a number bigger than negative 1, like 0, just check 0 is not the other number in the... Uh, second nature table. But if you put in 0, then you'd have 0 squared, 3 times 0, 3 take away 0 is obviously positive. So the graph will slope up the way. Which means then, in negative 1, that will be a minimum turning point. Do the same thing for 1. Pick a number just before that, like 0. Uh, that is going to give you a positive. We just found that. If you put in 1, you would get 0 in the derivative. And if you put in a number bigger than 1, like 2, 2 squared times by 3, 3 take away that, it will give you a negative. So that will be a maximum turning point. So we know this is a minimum, this is a maximum, but we need to know the y coordinates as well. So you can say when x equals negative 1, well, how do you find y? We'll go back to this original equation. We had y equals. So replace x with negative 1, and you'd have negative 1 times 3 minus negative 1 squared which will work out to be negative 2, giving you the point negative 1, negative 2, and that is your minimum turning point. Remember, from here the graph's going down, and then it's going up, so that's a minimum. With this one here, if you put in x to be 1 into the original, put it into y, then you would have 2, that it works out to be. Uh, and remember, that was a maximum. So you'll have a maximum turning point at 1, 2. 
So that's us got the stationary points, just going back a page. You need to know the stationary points and their nature in order to graph it, but you also need to know where it crosses the X and the Y axis. So let's look at that. Starting off with Y equals X bracket 3 minus X squared. Uh, the Y axis is dead easy to find. We've just got X equals 0. If you replace X with 0 in here, you can easily find the value of Y. It's just 0 times 3 minus 0 squared, which is 0. Meaning then, it's going to cross the Y axis at the point 0, 0. Do the same thing for the X axis. So it crosses the X axis when this time Y is 0. So you know that the X bracket 3 minus X squared must be equal to 0 because Y is 0. Solving that, well, just do it the way you did in National 5. You can see either X equals 0. If it was, that would give you the point 0, 0. Or if 3 minus X squared was equal to 0, well, how do you solve that? What you could do is add X squared to both sides. Mm -hmm. And that would give you X squared equals 3, meaning then that X would equal positive or negative root 3 which means then you'll get these two points root 3 0 and negative root 3 0. After that we've found out where it crosses the x-axis the y-axis we've got the stationary points so let's just bring all that information together so that is what we have found so far and now we have to graph it so you're going to draw your x-axis and your y-axis and you're going to start plotting the points. When you are asked to sketch it though you don't have to start writing on 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1, 2, 3, 4 and negative 1, negative 2. It doesn't have to be accurate when you're doing this. You just want to draw an x-axis or y-axis and then roughly plot where the points would go. So we've got a minimum turning point at negative 1, negative 2. So if I can draw this so you know that's going to be a minimum turning point, so the graph's going to come down and then go up through there. It's a maximum turning point at 1, 2, so the graph will look something like that there. It is going through these points on the axis, so it's going to go through that uh, root 3, and it's going to go through negative root 3, and it's going to come up through 0, 0 as well. So if you draw these parts on, and then if you join them up, you will get something that looks like that. So that is going to be your graph. Let's try another example. Example number two. Sketch the graph of y equals 8x cubed minus 3x to the power of 4. Doing the same thing, you need to know the stationary points and where it crosses the x and the y axis. So stationary points, first of all, we have y equals, just what the question was saying, and first thing you do to get the stationary points is differentiate. So dy by dx equals 24x squared minus 12x cubed. After that, Ryan, where do you get the stationary points? Where dy by dx equals zero? Well done, Ryan. Good. Stationary points occur when dy by dx equals zero. So set dy by dx equal to zero. And you've got 24x squared minus 12x cubed equals 0. What do you do from there, Ryan? Factorise! Well done, you would factorise that. So if you factorise, you'd end up with 12x squared bracket 2 minus x equals 0. And that is just splitting it up. So we've got something times something. So set each of them equal to 0. And you could say 12x squared equals 0 or the 2 minus x equals 0. If 12x squared equals 0, what value would x have to be? Well, it has to be 0. And if 2 take away something is 0, the something would be 2. So we know the x values of the stationary points would be 0 and 2. Just take that over the page. Just remember, whenever you get the x values after that, you always, 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 always have to use your nature table. So we've got two nature tables this time because we've got two values of x. That was y, that was dy by dx, and your nature table pick a value just before 0 and a value just after 0. Value just before 0, negative 1. If you sub a negative 1 into dy by dx, you'll end up with a positive value, meaning the graph will be sloping up the way. If you put in 0, well, you would end up with 0, so there's a 0 gradient there. And if you pick a number bigger than 0, 
by 1. If you sub that in, you would end up with a positive as well. So the graph is going to be sloping up, then you've got a zero gradient, and then it's sloping up again. And do you remember what you call that, James? Well done, it's a point of inflection, good. And second nature table, we've got 2. If you sub that into dy by dx, then you would have uh, a number just before 2. So if you sub in 1, again, you get a positive value. If you sub in 2, you would end up with 0. And if you sub in a number bigger than 2, like 3, try subbing in 3 here, and you would end up with a negative number. So that will turn out to be a maximum. After you find out the x values, you know if it's a maximum, minimum point of inflection, you do have to get the y values as well. So when x equals 0, make sure when you do sub this in, you are subbing it into y equals. It's this one up here that you're wanting. Do not sub it into the derivative sub it into y equals. So when x equals 0, that will work out to be 0 as well, because you've just got 8 times 0, and then minus 3 times 0, which is 0. Uh, so from there, that's going to be a point of inflection at 0, 0, which you can see here, a rising point of inflection. When x is 2, sub that into y equals, and you will end up getting 16, meaning then that, well, when x was 2, that was a maximum, so you would say there was a maximum turning point at 2.16. We found out the stationary point, so now you need to know where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis, so going over the page to do that, and you could say the graph crosses. I usually go with the y-axis first, it's dead easy. You just make x equal to 0, and if you did that, then it's dead easy to work out that you just get the point 0, 0. Crossing the x-axis, you make y equal to 0. So from there, well, y equals 8x cubed minus 3x to the 4. If y was 0, then all of that would just equal 0. Solving that, just factorise. So x cubed bracket 8 minus 3x equals 0. And it's the same thing that we did over the page. You would say x cubed equals 0. In other words, x is 0. Or 8 minus 3x was equal to 0. Add 3x to both sides, divide by 3, and you will get x to be 8 over 3, or 2 and 2 thirds, giving you then the points 0, 0, and 8 thirds, 0. So, with all that information, again, you can look at it in your jota, but this is what we have found. We know there's a stationary point at 0, 0, point of inflection, maximum turning point at 216, and then where it's crossing the x and the y axis. Do the same thing, draw an x axis and a y axis. Remember, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. After you do that, you just want to mark on these points. So mark mark on 20, mark on 216, and then mark on the 8 thirds. From there, just think, well, it's a point of inflection at 0, 0. It was a rising point of inflection. So the graph's going to do something like that. It's going to be going up. Then you've got a 0 gradient, and it's going up again. You had a maximum turning point at 216. So the graph will look something like that there. Uh, hopefully drawn a wee bit better than that. And it's going to cross over the x-axis at that 8 uh, over 3. Join those points together, and you will get a graph looking something like that. And that will be your answer. Give these questions a shot. See how you are with sketching curves. All you're really doing is working out the stationary points and then the points of intersection on the X and the Y axis. Give it a shot. Have fun. Bye.